Good afternoon. As we celebrate this 15th Sunday in ordinary time, let's all stand and join in singing our gathering song. Number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom. Number 734. Sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks. is near for those who fear him and his glory will dwell in our land Lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation merciful love and faithfulness have met justice and peace have kissed faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation also the lord will bestow his bounty and our shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him and guide his steps on the way. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will 
in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times, to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. According to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, Stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years back, at one of my, my summer assignments when I was in seminary, I was preparing to give a series of talks to a group of junior high kids. And I remember going to the, the guy I was working with, a good friend of mine, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of nervous. I don't know what to say or what to do. And he started writing on a post-it note. And I thought, man, I'm trying to tell you all my, my life's troubles here. I need you to solve them for me, and you're doodling on a post-it note. And when he had finished writing, he turned the post-it around and stuck it down on my notebook. And I looked down, and all it said was, I was, God did, I am. I was, God did, I am. And he looked at me and he said, Scott, don't overthink it. Just tell them your story. Tell them what God has done. And that's the heart of the gospel. That God came to you where you were. He worked in your life. And now here you are. And as I was preparing for the, the readings this weekend, I looked at this letter from St. Paul to the Ephesians, and that post-it note came to my mind. 
This beautiful letter that St. Paul wrote to believe that he wrote it from prison. So that in itself is something pretty awesome that Paul is writing from prison and writing of the blessings and the goodness of God. Addressed to the church in Ephesus, it was like a lot of Paul's letters, right? Would have been read and circled around to the various different churches. And like most of the things that Paul writes, it's in the form of a letter and he goes on and then he begins normally anyway to address the people in some greeting, some blessing to them. But to Ephesus, he stops first and gives blessing to God. And in some ways, I think Paul calls to mind, right, this journey of salvation, our own conversion, right? Our turning to the Lord. I was, God did, I am. You know, when we look at where we've been, all in humanity, right? That all was great and perfect and good in the eyes of God. And then sin entered the world. And that's where we, as human beings, that's where we were, right? I was. And in our own life, we can all see at some point in our life to say, I was, insert your own situation here. I was at this rough time. I was in this job that I was just hated, right? We've all had something that we can say, I was. And then we can look and say, then God did this. And I want to focus for just a minute on what God did. And I think that's where we can turn to our letter to the Ephesians today. And I want to highlight kind of three things, right? St. Paul says we were chosen. And he said you were redeemed and forgiven of your sins and sealed with the Holy Spirit. You were chosen, you were redeemed and forgiven, and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. God chose us. He pursues us. If we go back to the garden after Adam and Eve had fallen to sin, right? It says that in the cool of the day, God was walking through the garden and calling out to them, where are you? Where are you? And throughout all of salvation history, we read that God continued to pursue, to pursue his beloved. So much so that God became man and he suffered and died on a cross for our sake. To this day, God continues to pursue us. He continues to call out to us to the very depths of our heart. Where are you? Then St. Paul says that you were redeemed and forgiven of your sins. And I thought about St. Anselm who in his work on why God became man, he looks at this question of redemption and forgiveness of our sins and light of the fall in the garden and the pursuit of God. And he said, not only was it because of love that God became man, but it was because of necessity that God became man. And he said, you see, man fell and that's what brought sin into the world. Sin and death came because of mankind. And he goes on to say that because of that, the price had to be paid by a man. But you see, the problem with that is none of us could pay the price, right? None of us could pay the price for our own sin and for the sins of the world. So God becomes man. God becomes man and pays the price for us that none of us could pay because of love. That he created us out of love and he died for us out of love. 
And it's in the sacrament of baptism, right, that we enter into that. That we enter into that. We talk about being buried with Christ in baptism. The church fathers used to talk about how baptism, when you enter into the font, that you enter into the grave where you die to your sinfulness. And then coming out of the water, you rise in the newness of life given to you by Christ Jesus. The redemption and forgiveness of our sins. And then he says that you were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And again, I think back to baptism. When the newly baptized is then anointed with the oil of chrism. Anointed with the oil of chrism, receiving the gifts and the presence of the Holy Spirit upon them, then being named and called and chosen as a child of God, adopted, as it were, by the Father. That from that moment on, we're no longer wandering through the desert. We're no longer trapped in Egypt, if you will, that place of sin and death. But by that point, we are now sons and daughters of God. The introduction to the rite of baptism talks about it as the entrance, the gateway to eternal life. Coming out of the water, having been washed and cleansed of our sins. Becoming a people of hope at that point, right? A people looking forward to the kingdom of God, relying on his promises, which brings in the next part. I am. I am. What a beautiful, beautiful thing that is. I am. I am a son of God. You are sons and daughters of God. How awesome when you think about what a gift, what a grace it is that you are the beloved, right? That God loved you so much that he died and rose again. And that by entering into the waters of baptism, we too get to share in that life. But we hear in our gospel today that it's not enough just to call ourselves called, right? But we are also sent. Being united into the body of Christ through the sacrament of baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. By virtue of your confirmation, you are now sent to share in the mission of the Twelve that we hear in the Gospel of Mark today. That Jesus summons them and he sends them out two by two. That same sending out applies to all of us. I was. God did. I am. I invite you to look in your own life as we prepare to receive our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Most Holy Eucharist. To look at your own life. To look at where you've been and what God has done for you and where you are now. So that as you approach Him, truly present on this altar, that like St. Paul, you can say, Blessed be God no matter what's going on in your life, that you can say, blessed be God, because I know who I am. I was, God did, I am.
Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God's love and mercy for us, we bring to him our needs, the needs of the church and of the whole world. For first responders, may they have the protection of St. Michael as they serve, protect, and heal. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our military, police, firefighters, and health care workers, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the pastoral region of St. Teresa and St. William, may we continue to grow in faith and strength as a community to better serve the Lord, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth in this faith community, may they grow ever deeper in their faith and desire of the Lord, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be received in the merciful embrace of our God, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Thelma Tude, on her anniversary remembrance, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Trusting in your great love and mercy for us, Almighty God, we bring to you these our needs and petitions. We ask that you hear and answer them in accordance with your holy will, through Christ our Lord. I have 
save us far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as a to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Dennis our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, 
to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And to us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die are grateful for this gift. Thankful for God's love. Be with understanding of the wheat of the wine united with God's word and the love we Bless our lives, nourish all who hunger for this feast. Shelter them with peace. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall. participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. And if you would please be seated for a few announcements.
please join us at St. William's Father Reardon Hall this Sunday, July 11th, following St. William's 11 a.m. Mass as we welcome Father Zach and Father Scott to our parish family. Next Sunday, following the 9.30 a.m. Mass, there will be a free uniform exchange for any student who needs a school uniform. If you have any school uniform items your child has outgrown, please consider donating it and dropping it off at the parish office this week. Every Wednesday in July and August are St. Teresa Bruin Days at General Custer's on Westbourne Avenue. Mention St. Teresa and you will get all you can golf and a small ice cream with one topping for $8.50. Information will be in next weekend's bulletin. Just a couple more things. Um, as you've probably heard, this year our Archdiocese celebrates 200 years of ministry. And a lot has changed in 200 years. When we got started, you know, they were riding on horseback. It was all of Ohio, I think all of Michigan, and it was a lot. It was a lot. But anyway, a lot to celebrate, right? Even our parish here, over 100 years old, the Lord has truly blessed us um, in a lot of ways. Not just in our own parish, but in our archdiocese as well. And one of the things that they put together is a book called Treasures of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. And it goes through basically the history of the Archdiocese by talking about the various different parishes. St. Teresa and St. William are both in here uh, with beautiful pictures of our parish and a little bit about how we got started. Uh, the books are $30 each and there's a sign-up sheet over by uh, the Infant of Prague altar. So if you would like one of these, you can sign up and one of the ladies in the office will get in touch with you uh, when they arrive. So thank you. Also, you're probably wondering, who's the new guy? So my name is Father Scott Morgan. Uh, this is my first weekend here at St. Teresa, uh, but I just completed my first week in the assignment. I'm the new parochial vicar here at St. Teresa and at St. William. I was ordained on May 15th of this year, so I'm still learning a lot. I ask you, please be patient as I figure out things like how many Eucharistic ministers are at Mass, <laughs> where the light switches are, which it was an adventure, and of course your names. I want to get to know all of you and to learn your name, but it's going to take me a little bit of time. So please be patient with me um, as I settle in and, and learn who you are and who the parish is. Um, I grew up in Corbin, Kentucky. I converted, I became Catholic uh, in 2009, was confirmed on the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter. Uh, so it's been, what a journey. It has been an amazing journey that the Lord has brought me on. I've been praying for you, and I ask, please pray for me. Uh, I was ordained with six other guys who are still figuring out things as well. We all started our assignment at the same time. Again, it is a great joy to be here. I'm just two months shy. Of, uh, of being ordained for two months. I'm just shy of two months, so um, English is hard. <laughs> I'm almost two months ordained, okay? <laughs> um, so, and it has been amazing. It really has, and what a great week. Thank you all who I have got the opportunity to meet so far, the, the welcome that I've received, and your assistance and showing me around. I am so incredibly grateful, uh, so thank you. If you would please stand. If you would please stand. The Lord be with you and with yours. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.